What's going on guys? My name is Connor, or as some of you better know me as CMC Barber. And I want to welcome you to the first video in the CMC Masterclass series. Today, our first video is going to be on Jim. Jim has been with me since the start of my career, which was 14 years ago, so I thought it was only right that we start with him. This tutorial will consist of a short skin fade crop. What that means is we're going to go for a bald fade on the sides. He's going to have a short cropped fringe, graduated back, with some short natural choppy texture to enhance that natural flow. Before we get on to the cut, I just want to introduce you to the tools that you're going to need for this video. So this is our setup today. We've got our fade brush, our YS Park, we've got our cordless signature dart clippers. We've got cordless T Super trimmers. I'll go for the Braun S9 foils. For scissors, we're using the Mataki Hazuki 5.5. Our thinners, we've got a Keisho texture razor. We've got our faded straight blade. With our guards, they consist of a 1.5 guard, a 0.5 guard, a grade one, this is a metal guard one that you can get online. I'll post a link in the description below where to get it. Another guard one. This guard is your generic grade one. And this is a little bit longer than this grade one. You're going to want to be using both grades to get more of a consistent fade. We've got Andis Clipper Spray, which is disinfectant. We've got an air can to brush out all the debris from the clipper. We've got our clipper oil to lubricate. We've got powder, which will take all the hair off that sticks to the head. This is also really good to put on the scalp just before you use your foils. This can help with their irritation. For our products today, we're gonna to be using Crazy Ball Salt Blaster. We've got some cooling tonic by Crazy Ball to put on after the fade. Some Crazy Ball Space Dust. And finally, our neck brush. So we're going to start by saturating the hair with a nice even coverage of water, making sure that we wet the hair through and keep a consistent amount of water on the head throughout the haircut. If you start cutting the hair wet, then make sure you finish cutting the hair wet. Once you've wet the hair down, you're going to map out the haircut by sectioning from the crown and following along the parietal ridge. The crown is the strong growth pattern at the back of the head and the parietal ridge being the part of the head where the head starts to naturally curve. You'll copy this for both sides, creating what is known as a horseshoe section, separating the sides from the top. Hold the hair in place using clips to make life easier. Now the top is sectioned away, you'll begin cutting what is known as the foundation. This is the hair along the parietal ridge, and this zone will dictate the shape of the haircut. You're going to pull the hair out at an elevation of 90 degrees. In simpler terms, this means you'll pull the hair out directly from the root and straight out perpendicular to the head. It's important to keep tension on the hair for a consistent shape throughout. In this case, you'll pull the hair through your fingers and cut as close to the head as possible. This will bring the hair down short enough to blend almost instantly when it comes to your clipper work. Okay, so you've worked your way around to the back of the head, the coronal area. You're going to carry on in the same fashion, but this time, rather than pulling the hair at 90 degrees, you're going to pull down at an elevation of 45. This is to create weight around the crown to introduce a body of shape into the back of the head. You're now going to start taking vertical sections known as graduation. This is to help connect the foundation into the sides of the head and work at influencing shape before you start your clipper work. Keep working your way around the sides of the head in similar fashion. As you get to the sides of the head, you're going to start angling your fingers towards the temple area. These are known as diagonal forward sections. This is to help introduce forward movement. Moving on to the top of the head, you're now going to cut the exterior shape of the haircut. You're going to take a centre section down the middle of the head from the crown to the frontal area. Part the hair either side and comb down to your foundation guide. Here you'll find your previously cut section where you're going to cut the fresh section of hair. Again you're going to cut this section at an elevation of 90 degrees so that you're not creating a weight line. You'll follow this side of the head right the way down to the temple area, retaining the same level of elevation and moving in uniform fashion. You repeat this for the other side. The exterior shape is now finished and you're moving up to cut the internal graduation. You're going to start by cutting the fringe to a short crop or the desired length of your client. The reason you start by cutting the fringe first is because this is the shortest point of the top layer and you'll use this as your guide throughout the top of the head. To create a natural textured finish, 
Use your scissors angled towards your fingers in a slight diagonal fashion. When cutting a textured fringe, you'll want to cut at one inch elevation, as this will slightly feather the hair, resulting in a cropped fringe that is not so heavy. If you're looking to create a heavy blunt fringe, bring your elevation to zero. This means cutting the hair blunt to where it falls, or using a clipper to shape up the front. Taking a profile section. This is a vertical section from the coronal area to the edge of each eyebrow. You're going to find your shortest point at the fringe and follow that guide back through your profile section. This will act as your guide for the top of the head. Once you've completed your vertical section, you're going to comb the hair forwards and begin cutting in a horizontal fashion making sure to pull the hair directly up and square. Square means that your fingers will not angle at any point during the scissor cut. This will retain weight around the corners of the haircut for a more aggressive masculine shape. You'll cut the top of the head in three zones. First zone is the center. The second is center left. And the third is center right. Now these zones are complete, you'll move on to connecting the corner of the shape by pulling the hair out and over directing the top to the size of the head. You'll notice that not much hair will come off at this part as you've already cut the bulk of these zones. To start introducing movement, you're going to comb the hair forwards to its natural growth and angling your scissor with the blade slightly open and closing, you'll slice the hair in a vertical fashion. This is known as channel cutting and will help break down the bulk and enhance natural flow. This is my favourite tool in the kit, the Keisho razor. The razor adds some really nice, subtle surface texture and has multiple uses. Here we're going to use it along the surface of the hair, following our previous comb line. This will add a choppy feel to the haircut and give the style some body. So that's the top finished and it's time to get the rough shape of the style ready to introduce your clipper work. Here I'm using Crazy Ball Texturizing Powder in damp hair with a couple of sprays of salt spray. I often cocktail products to get the benefit of each one in one application. You're going to dry the hair on a medium heat, medium power setting and using a vent brush you're going to wrap dry the hair. Wrap drying is a style of blow dry used to smooth down the hair to the natural curvature of the head, helping to dry the root and the scalp. So this is where we start our fade. Here you can see a fading diagram that I've created. This is designed to help you vision where you'll place each guide. Attach your grade two or six mil, and using your comb flat against the side of the head, check where the head starts to naturally curve. As we're gonna go for a square shape, you'll need to make sure that you don't run your grade two into the curvature of the head. Using a vertical movement, place your grade two in midway, move up and through the foundation, making sure to stay in a straight line and not to push into the curvature of the head. Attach a 1.5 guard or 4.5mm and with an open lever you're going to use a scooping motion and flick this guard right under your grade 2. Now close your lever fully and using the same technique flick just under your previous section. Now attach your plastic one guard, open your lever and work just under your previous section. Now that you've finished what is known as priming the haircut, this is getting the sides fade ready so that you've got a set point to fade into. You're going to exchange your comb for a fade brush and begin your zero line. From the temple area to behind the ear you're going to place your zero at one finger's depth and arch your line so it falls naturally behind the ear. To make this process easier, place your first guide at the temple, 
to second guide behind the ear and connect the pair. As you reach behind the ear and the back of the head, you'll find the occipital bone. This is the prominent bone at the back of the head. Now place your zero guide just below that. You'll follow your zero along and match up with the occipital guide. Repeat the process for the other side. Using the trimmers, clean up the area underneath where you placed your zero line, making sure you don't overlap the zero at the top. Before using your foils, soak the skin in talc. This will help combat irritation that the foil may cause. Spray down and disinfect your foils and clean up the area underneath the trimmer guide. Open your lever all the way and using your finger as a guide, create a 0.4 line. Now that you're fading, you're focusing on one half of the head, working in two zones. Follow your 0.4 guide from the temple and down to the occipital bone at the back of the head. Now that your 0.4 guide is done, you're going to click twice up or close your fade lever halfway. This will be known as a 0.2 and you'll use the corners of your clipper to begin knocking out the zero line. Following that, you're closed by one extra click or just behind the zero to a 0.1. And if there's still a faint line, close your fade lever all the way closed and gently flick the remaining line out. Attach your metal grade one and open the lever by two clicks, making it a 3.2 millimeter. Create a guide just above the 0.4, about a finger's depth above the previous line. Open your fade lever all the way, making the grade one a 3.4 millimeter, and using a scooping motion, fade this into the previously cut fade at the top. Now attach your 0.5 guard to your clipper and in short, quick succession, nudge up from your 0.4mm line. Following this, you're going to open your lever by two clicks and repeat the same process. Finally, open your fade lever all the way 
and exaggerate your scooping motion to finish the bulk of your fade. All that's left to do now is refine your fade. Remove your 0.5 guard, open the fade lever and using the corners of your blade, remove any dark spots that you see. This is one half of the head complete. Now using the same process, you're going to replicate this for the other side. Now that your fade is complete, you're going to gradually soften the fade using scissor over comb. You can remove any blemishes on the fade by point cutting into the dark spots to lighten the area. This will make the fade a lot smoother. So that completes the tutorial. Use the time at the end of your haircut to refine, sharpen and blade your client. This is the part that counts. It's attention to detail that can really make your haircuts pop. So spend some time here and get it the best you can. If you've made it to the end, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I really do appreciate the time you've given the channel. To stay up to date with men's hairdressing education, ASMR, tips, tricks and much more, please drop us a like, subscribe and turn on those post notifications. We'll be posting two videos a week on a Monday and a Thursday. Thanks a lot guys, we'll catch you on the next one.